<laughs> no. I'm already curious what you digged out now. No, I mean, don't worry. I'm, yeah, I'm more nervous than you are. Because it's really, for me, a uh, great pleasure. Because I don't think I ever introduce you in a talk, in a conference, any place. So, it is with very, very great pleasure that I announced Wolf of Honor from the EBI. His official title, Team Leader and Senior Scientist at the EBI. And it sets, I think, hides a little bit what's behind, really. Rolf started working as an annotator in Swiss Squad in 87, so 19 years ago. You could say that from the looking glass, 19 years or 20 years, he has been there from the beginning. <laughs> he left two years ago to do his PhD, so we, you know, we can uh, be, I mean, uh, saying that we, uh, we forgive him for this little infidelity. I mean, he had to do his PhD, I mean, and came back in 94 to head the Swiss Squad group at EBI before taking charge of the whole sequence database group, which encompasses, of course, the NVR nucleotic sequence data library and other database, pride, intact, well, you know, the list is so big. I wonder, well, if I continue, I mean, when we, in 87 we were working together, we would ever think that, you know, we were piggybacking on the NVR sequence database, that at one point, <laughs> you see what I mean, that we would leave uh, the NVR sequence database. We felt, you know, basically a minor little cut cog in all of this uh, thing. So, you know, if I put a geolinks series, of course, Heidelberg, where Ralph studied, he went briefly in Bath also in England, and of course, now Inkstone. Biolinks, you know, all Uniprotos, you know, everyone knows Ralph. I put also all UPO years, because I don't know if you know, but Ralph is the next president of UPO, starting in one in uh, 1st of January. And I put somebody else, Patricia Kahn. Rob knows why, a number of you uh, people knows why. She's a person which selected an art particular Rob. So she should be thanked for this wonderful choice. This is the email when Rob said that he was back again working and he said he was very happy about it. And you could see he was happy. <laughs> That's a picture. <laughs> which was taken, I think, uh, almost a few years after, but something like uh, 96. And what can I say? The only thing I can say is, Ralph, thank you. Well, I think I, I will come back to a few of these things later. I only want to tell you it's really just by accident that I'm working since 19 years now. Um, together with Amos, because when I saw the advert for a position for a student helper at EMBL in Heidelberg at the blackboard of the university, it said that it was that it was necessary to have a very good command of English, that it was necessary to um, have a good command of biology, and to be computer literate. That was really what, what put so many people off from applying. But I thought, okay, I have never seen a computer before. I'm already two years studying biology, and English is my worst subject in school, so I must be the right person. <laughs> and since nobody else applied, I got the job. <laughs> you think that's a joke. <laughs> okay, I think there are... There, is a, there are two reasons why I'm talking now. First, Amos knows that I will not go over time if there is a drink at the beach waiting for me. And the second reason is that I, it's the last talk today, and I think it's also necessary to, to reflect a bit back, because there are 20 years of Swiss Squad, 19 years I'm part of uh, this endeavor. And so it's, it's time to have a look at what we've done. Not to, to go back in history, but to use that to extrapolate what we want to do the next years. And we can give some examples. I say we, as in all the people working in, not only on SwissProd, on UniProd, but all the people working in bioinformatics databases. Look a bit back what we have learned and what we can see are things we can take over as lessons into the future. And that's why I have this uh, title, uh, Uniprod and Beyond, Integrated Database Infrastructures for the Life Sciences. 
So if we look what we have for demands and challenges ahead of us, then it's quite clear that we have hundreds of molecular biology databases uh, which capture certain types of data. And it will not be even enough because we are now in the era, era of, of high food, food biology. And a lot of this data will demand new types of databases and, of course, um, of integration. Because what the users want is that they have in one place all data they are interested in. All the data should be reliable. And, of course, it should be the Google-like box and the search engine that can read the mind of the user and give you exactly the answer you, you never were able to type. So, uh, the, the answer on the question you were never able to type. So, we need to react to this ever increasing and changing demands, and we need to do even more than we've done already before on integration of data, on standardization of data. A lot of these things were already mentioned before. Amos gave a lot of good examples from the annotation side of it, why it's important to have standardization and integration. Uh, we need to modularize the data even more when we capture it so that we can reuse components better. I'm not only speaking here about um, software, but also about the data and items as such. And then one of the big strengths of bioinformatics, what we need to capture, uh, keep going also in future is cooperation. Of course, we all of us here want to compete in the sense that we all want to be the best. That's good. But all in, in bioinformatics are usually very willing to cooperate. And we can be competitors and cooperators at the same time. And that is something what is really unique, I believe, unique in biology, where we really can uh, be proud of. One important thing for the future is that we need to harvest data at the source. It's very, very expensive to go through the literature and dig all the information out and put it into the databases and to make this then nicely linked, standardized, and so on. We need to find ways to do that directly at the source so that it's much cheaper, that the curators, our annotators, will become sort of editors of this information instead of a mixture um, of, of a clerical person, of a biologist, of a support person. The, a curator has umpteenth roles, and, but it's that the curator should develop into a sort of editor of this data. We have already reached a lot. There are all, nearly all nucleotide sequences go into the nucleotide sequence databases at the EDBJ and the GenBank. We are capturing the, uh, the proteins in the Uniprot and classify proteins in the family and domains in Interprot. Again, a big cooperation. I'll come back to that later. Genomes are dealt with in Ensemble and in the genome reviews. Array data gets dealt with in, um, in uh, Array Express and Geo. The international PDB is capturing the macromolecular structure data. There's, as I said, there are new data types coming, like new cooperations on protein protein interaction uh, with the IMAX consortium, intact, MINS, DIP, BINDS, and so on. And these blue things that are these links, they're not coming out of the blue. To integrate this data and to make the links working is a lot of work, especially since the data is changing over quicker and quicker and quicker. So, if we look for the database growth, we can see we can cope quite nicely with putting data into the um, into the nucleotide sequence database. Even translating it from the nucleotide sequence to the Tremel records goes relatively quickly. But if we want to annotate this stuff, to put the real biological value on top of it, that's a much slower pace to do the curation work in Swiss. But again, that illustrates the need that we get the data earlier on in a good form that we can do something with it, that we are not typing everything in uh, from the literature. Structures. Here again, an example, Interpro, to, uh, to build the models and so on is one thing, but to integrate it and then annotate the uh, information on protein families and domains. That's the time-consuming step. Here we need to get uh, much better. And that is not something what uh, we can do by just hiring more curators, because nobody will give us money for that. So, in future, we still need to go ahead and make databases more useful by integration. Integration of different types of data in the various databases is one thing. 
integrating the databases with each other in a better way that you can ask complex queries is another thing. Harvesting data at the source to allow queries across databases will only work if we standardize the input of the information into the databases. And I listed here a lot of databases where a lot of it is going on already and will be uh, hopefully also successful in the past. So I, I come a bit to, to Uniprox to illustrate um, some of that, um, what I, what, of the points I wanted to make. I will not show any um, records, for example, because since this is uh, the anniversary meeting of, um, of Swiss Prod, so if you haven't looked at the Swiss Prod records yet, then you're definitely on the wrong meeting. <laughs> so the goals of Uniprod are the same as it was the goals of PIR, it was the goals of, of Swiss Prod. They are not changing. We want to provide high levels of annotation with minimal redundancy, high level of integration with other databases. This should be complete and up to date. And this is what we try to achieve now in three components the Uniprod archive, the Uniref uh, uh, sections, and the centerpiece is, of course, the Uniprod knowledge base with, uh, with the Swissprod part. Um, the, we heard before from Stephen Brenner's talk, one um, um, mentioning of metagenomics data, and uh, th there will be in October a new section of, of uh, Uniprod, which is um, dealing with metagenomics and environmental samples. And as an abbreviation, we have cunningly chosen the word Unimess, because I think it's a big challenge, and the name should reflect that. <laughs> okay. So the, the Uniprod archive is, oh sorry, that's the wrong way. Uh, the Uniprod archive takes all the source um, records we have. We integrate all the protein sequences we can get and um, uh, store them once. Uh, even if they are deleted from source databases, we keep them there, but uh, change only when the status of the uh, set, whether it's still active or not. So. This has right now something like 7 million or so sequences. And uh, of course, as soon as we get all the Unimass data, this will jump for, uh, up quite a lot. But the centerpiece is really the, the knowledge base. Uh, and there is a lot of work going into uh, literature curation, which is absolutely essential as the basis for all um, other means. If you want to classify something uh, based on protein families, then you need to have well-characterized members of the protein family. You can build automatic annotation rules, uh, as we do in Uniprod, but again, it doesn't work without a good base, base of literature. And the person really in the, in the center of our biologists, our bi biologist curators, without them, this work couldn't be possible. But we, what we all started here, as I said, the curators are taking a lot of data and integrated in Uniprod. They build links to other databases. Also, the programmers do uh, programmatic links to other databases. But it's we can't put uh, all efforts just in here and do it all in Uniprod. We need to have modules which are working with Uniprod for, yeah, because they are more tailored towards specific needs. Um, they can capture data what we can, what are not so useful to capture in, in Uniprod. And of course, we need also to engage more and more other people with community annotation. So there are good examples like the gene ontology work where we can share standardized vocabulary and standardized annotation across a whole range of databases. We heard about um, um, the Wikipedia proteins and I had to, I didn't change that anymore. Because we have also in our Uniprod grant proposal um, an idea about working on a Uniprod uh, a protein Wikipedia style of work. Where, and I have seen at least two or three other grant proposals which had such components. It's probably quite necessary soon to try to uh, speak with all the people who are involved in such efforts and to uh, make very unified uh, effort out of that. Because that is only can only be successful if it's a um, um, nice
nice uh, effort shared by a lot of the people with the right experience. Then this could be a really good addition of Uniprot uh, of community annotation in proteins. One other quite successful thing is, of course, DAS um, uh, distributed annotation system. Uh, we have already various systems uh, running uh, which allow to annotate on top of uh, Ensemble or of Uniprot. Uh, there's the Wild Sapiens project and there's the Transport project which uh, uh, builds um, annotations on top of Uniprot records. Um, that will be definitely something we need to, to work on in the future. Or one successful uh, mod, um, satellite of uh, here is, is Interpro. The Interpro database is a very, very successful collaboration of a lot of databases uh, worldwide. And it's extremely powerful and helpful to take all this vast amount of uncharacterized sequence data that we get from many, many genome sequence uh, projects to build, give at least a rough classification of what is in genomes in terms of protein families and in terms of domains. Another, another example of importance of standardization of information is the enzyme databases. Um, biochemical nomenclature is very important. Janet showed the slides that around 40% of the sequences are labeled as enzymes. We need to have uh, good standardized information on this so that it's easy to get all the uh, members of certain protein classes out. Again, there was a collaboration between different groups at SIP, at EBI, and at the University of uh, Cologne to build um, a, a definitive uh, reference source for, for uh, this type of nomenclature and to standardize then the records in our, uh, in our databases according to that. It's just a screenshot. A lot of us um, have in our databases information on compounds. Again, there was no proper effort to standardize how we can describe these compounds in different databases and search for all of them with all the synonyms and so on. There's now the chemical entities of biological interest, which provides a standard of biochemical compounds as reference for other databases. We try to integrate it more with existing resources, and it should be an instant reference for the non-chemists. Um, again, we try to uh, to characterize uh, the, the, each of the compounds in a full graph of different ontologies and use that later on for, um, as a reference in a lot of databases uh, so that we can uh, find in all databases uh, records uh, dealing with certain chemical compounds. An example of specialized databases for uh, of, of new types of data coming out is, for example, the INTEC database as part of the IMEX consortium handling proto-protein interaction data. We annotate in there um, the proto-protein interactions, and certain information of that gets then pumped back into Uniprot. And we, there we put in the more reliable data. But there, of course, there are a lot of um, proto-protein interactions which may be tr true as an experiment, but they may be not true in vivo. But of course, we can't decide that very often. So we, we, we make a threshold where we think we are on the safe side, and the other ones we give um, just links back to. And this is, I think, a very, very good model for a lot of uh, big functional uh, uh, genomics, proteomics data, what we will get in, in future. We will have specialized databases for this high group of data sets. Whether we run them, whether other sites are running them, it doesn't matter. It's necessary to have, it, have the data in a standardized way to look for, for means to characterize a certain subset as highly reliable. This we can use as abstractions and put it back into, uh, into such uh, reference collections like Uniprot. We can link out from Uniprot or from other databases to the much richer uh, data in the specialized collections so that we are not ignoring the data, but we say some data looks very promising and, and we want to show it directly straight on. Some, here's a link, evaluate it uh, by yourself as a user. That is just some snapshots. 
Another uh, type of this uh, special database is in specialized databases, the PRIDE database for protein identifications. Again, we tried uh, with a lot of collaborators to build up an international um, um, group of collaborators who will kind of capture such data. And again, there, in these databases, it became absolutely clear over and over again that it's only possible to deal with this data if we define community standards how to report this data. And the harvesting of this data needs to happen then from the uh, experiments directly onwards. If we try to extract data later out of the literature, it doesn't work. We need to get the data in a standardized uh, uh, way direct from uh, the machines which um, uh, perform the uh, experiments. And uh, a lot of us here are involved in such activities where, as part of MGET, as part of Google PSI, um, or other uh, related efforts. There, there are a lot of other databases, um, and there will be more and more of these of other databases come. Because it's very important to listen to the user needs. One size does not fit all. We are here protein-centric people. Um, and so we try to integrate everything around proteins and standardize everything around proteins and modularize uh, everything around proteins. And we cooperate around the proteins. But there are people who have a completely different view uh, how that should be done. And we need to listen to them and try to build specialized portals for these different communities. But only if we, if we have data in a standardized way, nicely modularized, then we can easily link out to the data. Because in the long term, it's not, biologists will not think in, as data in the sense of a flat file or of an entry or a PDB record. There are certain types of information they are interested in and they want to dig that out and combine it in different ways. And how to do that in the best way, that will be a challenge. We learned a lot from our right, what we haven't done in the past, but we can probably go and do it in a better way in the future. One of the um, uh, areas where we tried to do that is, for example, in the Integrate um, uh, system, which is a species-centric portal on information about the genomes of proteins. And Integrate is built from a number of sources, including Uniprot and the genome reviews. The genome reviews are, in some way, um, it's, it's a sibling of, um, of, uh, um, of Ensemble. It deals with all the gene and complete genomes which are not an Ensemble. Um, why is, was that necessary? We have the nucleotide sequence databases. Well, the nucleotide sequence databases are archival. So the sequence data are in there and the notation is owned, the editorial ownership is with the submitters. So even if there are clear errors, it's not that we can fix them without going back to the submitters. Very often the submitter is not existing anymore in the field of research because the postdoc or pre -doc, uh, uh, postdoc or um, doctoral fellow has left to something completely different and is not contactable anymore. Nobody knows what he, this person has done and so on. So what we do in the genome reviews is to standardize scope and format of annotation and uh, add new uh, import information from other uh, sources, mainly from Uniprot. That's just an example of some data in, um, in, um, in one of the genome reviews records. That was how it looked before, coming from the nucleotide sequence database. And there's a lot of uh, very little information and a lot of unstructured information, just nodes, which is unparsable. So again, we try to standardize data, integrate data, and so on, and also to make clear where it comes from. So this is importing data from a lot of sources, and it tells you where the data comes from. In this case, um, most of the data is from Uniprot, from, um, from Go, from Interpro. And as I said, it's a sort of sibling of Ensemble. We use the Ensemble genome browser in uh, genome reviews. Again, modularizing can take the component, adapt it, and make use of it again. And since you can reuse it, it's also again standardized, because if you know how it works for one genome, you can use the same browser for the other genome, so you don't then for each and everything or something new. As I said, um, Integrate is a, 
this, this portal and it provides an information, literature, statistical analysis for each species, gives access to a lot of downloadable file methods and uh, has different types of analysis what you can do with uh, interface and random reviews provides in context interpretation of data. Let's say you're interested in a certain gene, you found a few organisms which have this gene, click on one of them, you have a gene view, gives you new information, points you to other uh, sources which hold information about the gene, you can go and look it in, um, in context. So each of these um, lines is a different gene, so it's a gene neighborhood, very simple graphic to uh, uh, display of that. If you're interested in a certain transcript, it tells you information about all the transcripts coming from this gene, whether they are predicted or whether there's mRNA evidence, um, what is known about the expression state, and so on. And it links them all back to different resources. It's not, not making anything new. It's just taking information from other sources so that, um, that it's packaged in a different way for a different community. And that, as I said, only works if you have standardized information, modularized information, and integrate, uh, and only when it's possible to integrate. You can do the same on protein, and when you look at the protein level, again, this information goes back to Unicorn, PEB, Interpro, and so on. You can look for potential orthologs, paralogs. You can look for the, um, for the uh, potential orthologs in, again, in their, in their neighborhood. Here you can see that the operon structure is very much conserved. Each color means it has the, uh, whenever it's the same color, it has the same interpro domain architecture. So it's very easy to see that these are the same operon structures. Here some things have shifted around. Um, of course, you also want that people can analyze their own data on that. Um, so that's why we have a, a thing which is called the Inquisitor which provides um, uh, search facilities against um, the integrated database. This should only illustrate one example where I believe how we can go ahead and take information from a lot of different resources and build, hopefully, portals which are more community-specific. I think this was a prototype so far. I hope that it will become a very successful service for BBI in the future. But I believe we need to think about this way for, for the next years. There will be core resources. There will be little modules around there which have specialized data. We need to capture the data in a standardized way. We need to harvest it as early at the source as possible to make it cheap to harvest the data. And then we need to try to think about our users, put them in the middle, and build portals around which take this data together and provide it to the, um, to the, um, to the individual user communities. In this way, I think the bioinformatics field and the database field has still a glorious future ahead and 20 years are not uh, yet the end. But I think without this, we can't deliver at sustainable prices what the users want. And prices means somebody has to pay for it. So these are a list of our current funders, um, or current and past funders. Um, the main, for the EBI, the main money came from, really from these sources, EMBL as our um, um, institute where we belong to industry contributions. Gene Bio was the big collector for us here. The European Commission is, of course, a big contributor and the NIH is a big contributor to Unicode. Um, there are other uh, sources like um, MRC, EBSRC, UFO, and IUFO who gave um, the, uh, also some money. This is the current group um, at, at EBI. Um, so a lot of people. We had a lot of contributors. I mean, for example, NI, the NIH funds Uniprod. It's now um, EIR in Georgetown, that's an EBI, and that's uh, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. But really, our biggest collaborator over all these 19 years um, is what's now the SIP and what's, uh, what's now EBI and what's now SIP. This is a really a long, long uh, way we went together. And uh, I can only say the same to what Amo said, um, but it's, it's really it was a pleasure, uh, a big pleasure for 19 years. I mean, as I said, I started as a as a biology undergrad student. Amos was at this time a PhD student in Geneva. 
So it was not a big operation since then, but I, we, we have grown substantially, and I think this growth wouldn't have been possible without this possibility to compete on ideas, but to collaborate on the implementation of the ideas. I think at this we, are, we were quite good, and I think we will be also quite good in the future. And with that, I would want to say once again, thank you for this successful collaboration over such a long time. And now let's go and have a drink on that at the beach. <laughs> Do we have any questions? One question at the beach. Sounds good to me. <laughs>